Good evening everybody, my name is Jeremy C and I'm going to do another Construct 2 tutorial. This one is for a claw style game or a crane type game where the claw moves over, picks up the prize and puts it in a box and that's basically what it does. So the concept behind it is you got to be able to move your claw over and get it to drop, get it to come back up and move over without being able to have it interfered with with the controls and I'll show you what I'm talking about as you can see we have a claw up here if we move uh, to the right we want to make sure that our claw doesn't go all the way off the screen so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set a variable or a uh, um, in point so that it can't go over so if the uh, hook is equal to exponent it won't go any further and also with the left if it's equal to a certain amount, it can't go any further that way. Also, um, there's um, setup so that when you hit the button, you cannot touch any other button. So it will continue on until it gets back to its start point. It doesn't matter where it's at, but it's going to continue to go until it gets back to its start. And on collision with objects, when it touches a block it'll shift it and pick it up and again while it's even with the block you can't drop the block and start over and it drops it into there and adds one to score so that's basically what we're creating I am not gonna sit here and go through all this a lot of you understand how to add tile backgrounds and add sprites into the game um, basically what I'm gonna do is get into the meat of it and talk about how we get this to do what it does um, why everything's set up the way it is in the game how this is set up um, also about the different colors um, blocks that I got going on here uh, what's this and why is it doing what it's doing and our buttons okay and then we'll get into the event sheet which makes it all happen so let's get started and let's drop this one down okay so as you can see, we've got our um, tile backgrounds. Um, this is a tile background, which is just a 25 by 25 uh, block. As you can see, it's white on black. And if we scroll it in, you can see that it's like that. But if you wanted, you could use your fill. And as you can see, I have one of my fill blocks is set to uh, uh, transparent. So if I wanted to remove something, I could just do that and just remove any color I wanted out of um, my game okay as you can see I'm going around and just removing that nice area that it created okay and then I can remove this one on the outside like this if I wanted and then go uh, hit crop as you can see now it's square and then if I went in here and added the white back in and add white add white and now my block is better square than it was before okay and that's basically how I went about creating my blocks originally and over here, we'll just slide this one over just a hair, make it nice and clean. Okay, now there are some uh, components in here that you can't see, and one of them is hidden right here. It is the top uh, stopper or top blocker. Basically, this one and the um, hook collide on collision with. It keeps it from going over the top and also sets it to change direction to go back to its starting point okay then what you have after that one let's send this one to the bottom you'll see that I have this green one here it is a stopper basically on collision with my hook it changes all the things to um, drop the blocks into the um, wind bin also it changes it so that it's movable again okay Next, what we have here is we have our hook, which is setting on top of a guide rail, which actually 
doesn't guide nothing because our top blocker is our actual guide rail. It keeps it on track. Um, the only thing this one really does is for looks and also it's used for um, is overlapping to check to see if it's still in move or not move position. Um, there is also another one that you can't really see that's sitting underneath this one. So we'll move this to the bottom. Send that to the bottom. As you can see, there's a yellow block that just appeared out from under our um, thing. And that is our uh, anchor. And it's used for holding our rope to our guide rail and attaching it to the claw as the claw goes down. Okay. Um, next, what you'll see is we have over here in this corner is we have a wind bin. As you can see, it's a one big block here. But if you click on this one here, you'll notice there's a block in front of it. Okay, what that does is the block in front and the block on the bottom lets the other blocks pass between them. So it looks like it went inside versus behind or whatever. So basically what it did was as soon as this crosses about uh, 12 pixels, it looks like it starts to go inside. And that's what I was trying to accomplish with that. And there is also one more. It's called the uh, trigger wind block. And I'm going to have to click this one to bring it up. As you can see, it's just a sliver of a um, piece on the bottom. Basically, that piece is used for when the block falls inside and it touches it, it triggers an event. It triggers to add one to score. It triggers to destroy the block. And it triggers to, uh, um, I think it's triggers uh, fire to zero or something so that it, it allows the um, stuff to start all over again uh, but we'll get into that as we go uh, we have our left uh, control our right control um, our drop button which is allows us to drop the uh, crane down we also have a, a display block here that uh, displays every color that's in this collection it's just for display purposes only uh, we have text that will display score when one of these blocks ends up in here it adds one to the score total okay so we'll go into detail on how that works um, also this here is a tile background which is black which also matches the color that is um, around my buttons okay so if we go in here, as you can see, we have a black background with just an arrow on it that I created myself. And then all I did was I made another copy, flipped it, and then I made another copy, and I rotated it to the, um, the what is this, uh, clockwise direction, okay? Um, also, you have to make sure that your hook is facing to the right. Um, what we'll need to do with the hook is we need to make sure we add our image points. We have our um, origin, which is the center. We have our image point one, which is the eyelet of the um, eyelet of the hook itself. And then also we have image point two, which is our overlapping hooking for when it touches the blocks that it's picking up so that they set approximately right at the ends of the prongs okay so um let's close this one let's go back um also um on your hook you're going to need to set your properties you'll need the rex move to behavior for your hook uh you will need to add let's see uh, I'm trying to click this little yellow one here. Uh, the yellow one doesn't have any behaviors. Um, the green one. I think I added pin to the green one, but I didn't really need pin. Um, so I honestly don't believe that needed to be in there. So we could actually go in here and go uh, pin and hit delete. Because that didn't need to be in there. That's just a waste of um, a variable for no reason. Uh, the blocks, we need to add physics. And also pin behavior. So we have the pin behavior and physics. 
on this uh, tile background down here, uh, I've enabled the um, solid behavior, which I don't need. So let's go in here and go delete the solid because I don't need the solid behavior for it. What I do need is uh, um, make sure that uh, when you add the physics behavior, set it to yes for does it is it movable, yes or no. And it's not movable, so we need it to be set to yes. Okay. So with that said, let's double check, make sure I, got, I ran over everybody. Yup, yup, yup. Um, nobody else has any properties that I can think of. Okay. In in our blocks, um, I do have the animation speed set to zero for the uh, prize blocks, and as you can see, I have multiple colors. And they're just there for looks. Also, you can see that I set the um, the um, origin point for my uh, blocks. It's all image point one is up at the center, top, and the original one is the middle. Okay. Let's see. Anybody else? I think I think I just about covered all the the pieces to the game. And it, it all comes down to layering everybody just right and setting them just right. And like I said, then you just take your little um, block piece here and set it like that. Make sure that you uh, set um, invisible to the top uh, rail. And so I can show it. As you can see, invisible, um, the one that's inside the wind bin for the trigger. The trigger wind block is supposed to actually be invisible. Invisible. Um, the yellow one, which is our anchor, is set to invisible. Uh, the stopper is set to invisible. And like I said, that uh, top top blocker is invisible. Okay, so invisible, invisible, invisible. And then the one that's in the wind bin for the trigger is invisible. Everybody else is visible. And let's hit play and make sure I didn't mess up something. Okay. As you can see, due to the Z order, now my uh, anchor is behind again. So um, that's something you're going to have to watch when uh, doing your layers. Make sure that... Um, your pieces are where they're supposed to be at so we're going to send that to bottom and we're going to make sure this one is to bottom and then also this one in front is to top and by making sure that you set those after you put your price blocks in there they will slide between them because their Z order is somewhere in between your bottom and your top okay so let's hit play one more time and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of how all the mechanics work okay as you can see it's now back where it's supposed to be we go over here and we pick it up and if you watch as it goes over the wind bin is going to fall between the two and boom just like so okay that's what it's supposed to do and now let's get into the event sheet talking about what each piece does i already pointed out what they are now let's get into the nitty-gritty of how it works okay you need to set your global variables you'll need a score a move and fire which is also trigger or drop whatever you want to call it um, first off, we're going to start with what's um, available for you guys to see. We're going to start down here at the bottom where it says prize on collision with trigger wind block. Um, so when it hits that wind block, what it's going to do, and it says for each prize, I had to put it in there individual because um, for each one that hits it, it has to destroy. So if you don't have this for each prize in here, what happens is when when it hits that block and it says prize destroy it would wipe them all out 
So you have to have the for each statement in there or it won't compare each one of them to see which one got um, triggered on that block, okay? And then the next one is um, system, add one to score, and also uh, score text, set text to uh, equals space and score, which is the global veritable. And I'll show you how to add that in there. And as you can see, the global variable from up here where it says score and you would just click on that and hit done okay so this is a system on add to score and you can have it change to anything you want but it says choose a variable to add to and we're adding one to score okay and everybody knows this one um, object destroy real simple easy done okay so next what we need to do is we need to go in here and look at our trigger buttons that make this stuff work and this every tick here this is what makes the whole nutshell work but we need to go over what the buttons do and why they're set up the way they are okay okay so first one is on touch is touching left uh, button and move equals zero basically it's a control mechanism that says if it's not set to zero you can't move right or you left that's why both of them have that is equal to zero is because we want to enable and disable the uh, move right and left buttons um, so that you can't use it while you're under drop okay so now we have our uh, variables in here if hook x so if it's x coordinates so we got to compare our um, what it is is greater than 67.001 then we're going to do this action here so it's hook move to self minus one so since it's x minus one basically that's saying we want to keep moving over one pixel as long as we are touching this button so as long as it, we keep touching it, it keeps moving over one pixel, one pixel, one pixel. It keeps repeating over and over. Okay. Also, um, anchor. This is that little yellow block I was talking to you. It, it needs to have a set position to hook at image point one, which is the little eyelet in my hook. Um, so that it's setting right on the guide rail. The object is to keep it on the guide rail so when the hook drops, we can create um, our rope between the two objects, okay? Um, this next one in here says uh, hook is um, less than or equal to at 67001. Do the following, okay? We're going to set the um, hook move to self x self dot y. Basically, what I'm saying is I don't want it to move. And that's how I get it to stay right where it is. I don't want it to go up, down, left, or right. I just want it to stay right as it is if it's at that margin. That means that is the wall blocker right there to keep it from going off the side of the screen. Okay? So that's what that says. And also setting the anchor position at image one and one okay so if it's touching here this needs to be set here this needs to be set here and as it continues to move over the anchor moves with it okay it's not pinned to in any way shape or form so don't get me wrong as to what i'm saying it actually moves with it by setting its position to hook image point one okay so I didn't have, I didn't attach it at any location to it it's, it's just following a long suit for every time I push the button okay so let's close that next what we're looking at is we're doing the right way now this one's the same exact thing except for we changed a few variables uh, first one that we changed was this one here which is less than or equal to that means the play area of the game if it's less than or equal to 576 that is the distance across the screen that it can travel 
it will do the following task. It says, if it's within the game play area, move self X plus one. So we're moving one pixel at a time. That's what gives that nice scrolling effect across the screen. Okay. And also set the position of anchor to image point one. If the hook is outside the game area, is greater than, then we want it to stop. We want it to say self.x, self.y at the move to. Okay? And also set our anchor to set at image point one. Okay? So now that we got our right and left out of the way, now we get into the drop button. The drop button actually has more than just what's inside it. As you can see, it says uh, hook is equal to or um, is less than or equal to 125. What we want to do is we want the hook to set to move to self X by self Y. And the move to is actually Rex move to is what we're using in order to use the move to X and Y. And let's go back. And as you can see down here. It's the move to X and Y is what we're using in this thing. Okay. So basically, I'm telling it I don't want it to move any which direction. When the button is pressed, if it's within the um, vicinity of the uh, wind bin. So basically, I want it to be greater than 125 before you can even trigger fire. Okay. So next what I have here is I have system, fire equals zero. That means it hasn't, um, this button hadn't been pressed yet or just now got pressed. And then it has to be greater than 125. In order, that means that the hook has to be 125 pixels over and fire has to equal zero in order to trig this, trigger this event. Okay. So system, set fire to 1. As you can see, we're looking at our global variables. Set fire to 1. And in here, we're going to set move to 1. So basically, what happened is when you press the down button, you just disabled the moving. And you also set it to um, do one of three tasks from there. The first one is going to be inside this uh, every tick the first uh, thing it's going to do is it's going to create a rope between the anchor point and the hook so basically what we've got is we got our rope set position to anchor at image point zero then uh, rope set angle towards hook X hook Y so basically the hook is going down so our anchor is saying, okay, our rope needs to turn in the direction of wherever it's going, whether you're going right or left or whatever, is saying the angle is that direction. Okay. The next one here is rope set width to distance of anchor dot image point X and with an O. Okay, I don't know why it's saved. So basically image point x zero and image point y zero and then also slash hook x slash hook y so what we're doing is the distance between the hook x and y and the image point zero x and y of the anchor so we're creating the rope between it okay so that's what we got going on on every kick and then we're going to open that up. Now we have our three variables. We have fire one, fire two, and fire three. On fire one, which is the initial uh, trigger, it says hook on collision with control background. The controls background is basically the floor of my game. It says system set fire to two. So that means we're going to trigger an event when it hits the background or hits the bottom without anything colliding between it. 
and it'll trigger this event down here okay so next this one is here it says hook on collision with prize sorry I'm, I'm wow indigestion um, on hook on collision with prize prize set position to hook image point two which I showed you how it was offset um, basically what it's telling it before it pins it is I want it to move to the image point two position so that it's off a of pixel by pix or half a pixel on either side so that um, when it pins to it it stays right there and then um, on the next one it says prize pin to hook at position and angle and then then it says system set fire to three so basically we're, we're controlling if it can refire or move by adding those variables okay so that's what we got going on so far um, also we have hook is not overlapping the control background so that means the hook hasn't touched the ground yet so basically as long as it's not touching the ground and it's not touching prize what it's doing is says it will continue to move self self x so basically it's not moving side to side it's going to move straight down and as you can see it says self y plus one so until it either collides with another object or it collides with the ground it's going to continue to go all the way down one pixel at a time you can speed it up if you wanted you could put five six seven you know go real real fast but it gives it a nice smooth effect using the one pixel okay <coughs> so that's our trigger one events we have all these in there and you can actually rearrange them however you want um, I have them in there that way just for fun okay so we've uh, looked at our fire one events now we're going to look at our fire two events since we know that on uh, um, hook collides with the ground it, it it's going to go straight back up and, and then go back to the reset point that's what all these next things are it says hook is overlapping top blocker so basically when it hit the ground and it went back up if it's overlapping the top is not overlapping the top blocker so basically is saying we're gonna uh, roll it back up so hook move to and Y minus one so basically we're moving it up slowly <coughs> we didn't just want to spring it back up there okay so hook is not overlapping the top blocker hook move to self X means uh, not side to side but we're gonna go one up one up one up uh, until it hits the top blocker okay um, next one is hook is overlapping the top blocker that means it's touching then it's gonna switch to this event where it says hook move to self X minus one versus self Y minus one and then self Y that means it's not gonna go any more up or down it's just gonna go across back to its start position on the left okay and then also since we're moving to uh, the left we want to also reset our uh, anchor image point to move with it so set position to hook image point one for our anchor um, next event in the list is hook on collision with the stopper which is that little green block I was showing you basically what it says once that gets to that point we want to set move to zero and set fire to zero so basically we want to reset the system when it gets all the way over there so we can move again and pick up blocks again okay <clears throat> so basically it creates a cycle that says let's roll it back up and let's slide it back over and then when we get there then we can turn everything back on is basically what that set of uh, variables says now three is going to be almost identical except for we're going to add the um, pin to the block part in there that says on collision with block we're going to pin it pick it up and, and 
take it back to the stopper and drop it okay so basically like the first part of um, two it says is not overlapping the top blocker we're gonna roll it back up by minus one as long as it's still under three it just keep going until it hits the top blocker so hook is overlapping the top blocker move self so X minus one X minus one versus Y minus one and set our uh, anchor position to hook at image point one so that's where the eyelid is on the thing so basically we don't keep creating a rope that looks like it's doing a Z pattern or whatever we want to keep those two connected as best as possible if they're not set together it'll create a rope between the two distance until such a time as you uh, figure out what you did wrong okay so next one is um, hook on collision with stopper which is that green block it says set set move to zero so that you can move side to side we're gonna unpin the prize and since it has physics behavior on it when it unpins what it's gonna do is it's gonna drop okay next one is hook uh, move to self X self Y so basically I'm telling it that I don't want to go right or left and I don't want it to go up or down I just wanted to move right there to stop okay and then next what I did is we got system set fire to zero that means now you can press the uh, down button in order to trigger events and also in here it says prize set physics to enabled um, that actually doesn't need to be in there because I never disabled the physics uh, da -da, I had way too much fun when I was uh, creating it the first time around okay so let's take that one out and that's basically all the uh, there was to uh, the game and I'll show you by removing that physics part that I didn't affect the game in any way shape or form so let's close that back up close the every tick up close the buttons back up and go back to the game so if I hit play as you can see physics are enabled from the start <laughs> they fell we're gonna move this guy over I'm gonna drop him down as you saw that was the uh, move to and then pin okay next he's gonna drop it and score equals one okay so let's go back in here and double run over everything do, do, do. okay make sure that you have your physics enabled on your prizes and your pin to also um, make sure that your image point is set to the middle of your hook for your uh, anchor to work with your rope your rope can be outside your game area it does not need to be there also your anchor can be up here and then once it starts doing it things, it will move it to where it needs to be. But if you don't want to see the rope from start, where it's like trying to go across your game field, it's best to set it right at where it's supposed to be. Uh, set invisible for your uh, stopper, your uh, um, anchor for your top blocker, and also doo -doo 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 -doo, it was the wind bin trigger. So your trigger your stopper your top rail and the yellow uh, anchor point you need to all be invisible uh, set this one to um, the bottom set this one to top after making sure that these pieces are already in your game because if you don't what happens is they could be on top of this one and then it looks wrong or they could be behind this one and it doesn't fall right okay this one here has loops set on it at uh, 0 0.75 um, that's up to you it's basically it's just a copy of these blocks set there okay so I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on what I did in order to create this game um, like I said if you want 
I will sit here and open all this and scroll down just so you can have a good reference since we're at the end of the, the uh, video tutorial. I'll open it all up. So you can see what's going on. Because I know a lot of you will say, but I did this and I did that and it's not working right. So I'm giving you a clear view as to what needs to be done. You need to have the Rex Move 2 behavior installed on your uh, Construct 2. Set your uh, score. That's a veritable on the end and veritable that I added. Okay. Don't forget to add one to score veritable. Uh, set your fire veritable. You need your globals. Okay. So one more quick thing. It's score, move, fire. Um, on touch left, move equals zero. And then it creates these events. Also, remember X versus Y. So you're going to right left for x y is up down okay got to remember that because there'll be ones where it says minus one and plus one and it also does it on the y too as for if it's going up down left right so make sure that you you're doing the positive versus negative because this is a negative y this is a positive y um this is a negative x and then there's a positive X in there somewhere. Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, the positive X's are up here. This is a minus. This is positive. Also, make sure to set your anchor to image point uh, um, one on hook. So that it follows across. Also, your rope. Make sure to set anchor point to image point zero of your anchor. Uh, set angle towards hook X, hook Y. And then also make sure that you do this one properly because this was a lot of wording here. This is um, distance is going to be your first part when you start it. It's distance and then enclose anchor image point x with a slash anchor image point y with a slash hook x hook y and then close it like i said that's going to be probably your longest part of the code that you have to remember in this whole thing okay so let's scroll it down one more time let you see see the little bits of text stop long enough for you to be able to pause it if you have to okay so with that said you guys have fun and I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to create a crane style game okay and as you can see if it's over the uh, wind bin you can't drop it and until it's actually clear you can't drop it so it has to come out 125 or better before it comes down so it won't even touch the side of the um, bin okay and like I said you can't trigger it until it gets back to its start point have a great one enjoy